Hi, I'm Jim Luckett of Sailboats to Go. In this video, you're going to see how the Intex Mariner sail kit is attached to the boat and how you raise and lower the sail. And I'll also talk a little bit about similar boats and how the attachment might differ just a little bit. Okay, first I want to point out that right now I've got the optional extra cost wheels on the boat. And these are a great accessory. I really recommend you consider them. This allows the boat to be wheeled on land so you can get up to your launch point very conveniently and then back to your car very conveniently. And once I get down to the water's edge, I just pull the wheels out and I either put them in the boat, put them back in the car, or leave them at the water's edge. Isn't that a great accessory? Okay, while the camera's still on the tripod, let me show you about raising and lowering the sail. This rope here is called the halyard. And it's sliding through an eye up at the top of the mast. To raise the sail, I just pull down on the free end of the halyard, and then up it comes. This rope here is called the downhaul, and it's got a length adjustment there so you can tension it up, tighten it up. Once I've got the sail up, I tie the free end around the front crossbar to hold it up. The knot I'm using is a double half hitch, and I folded the rope over to make an end that isn't really an end, it's a folded end, and that makes it easier to tie the knot. So that's called a double half hitch on a bite. That folded over piece is called a bite. Let me bring you closer to what we're doing. Here's the knot that I just tied. Double half hitch on a bite. Tying around the front crossbar. And then I'll follow it up and you can see the rope goes right through that eye at the top of the mast. And it would be a good idea if I had tied it a little tighter. That knot at the sail should be right up against the eye at the top of the mast. To make that easier, don't attach your downhaul until you've got the sail raised. Then you'll be able to get the knot right up at the top. Tie your halyard tighter, then do the downhaul. Okay, we can see that the sail kit frame consists of a front assembly, which is U-shaped, crossbar and two side rails, and a rear assembly that's just a crossbar and a right angle piece, making it a T configuration. And the purpose of the rear assembly is just to give you these pivot points for the oar pin so you can steer. Let's look at how the front assembly is attached. You tighten up these knobs on top of the leeboard mount and that locks the telescoping action of this inner piece of the side rail so that now your side rail acts like one piece. You put a short strap through this hole in the end of the side rail and then you slide that strap underneath the oar lock. You can see there's a space under the oar lock base and the strap fits nicely through that. Up at the front corner of this U-shaped front assembly we've got a rope fitting for this grab line that's a standard part of the boat from Intex and we put the strap through the hole there and diagonally around the joint where the side rail meets the front crossbar and tighten that up. While we're here and we just happen to be looking at these snap buttons, the 
front crossbar is jointed so you have a two-piece front crossbar that is a small extra cost you could get a crossbar that's one full length piece but that'll be pretty inconvenient to handle in your bag and so forth so we recommend the two-piece front crossbar and it just comes apart at that joint by pushing these snap buttons down at the middle front we've got a medium length strap that goes from the front handle the bow handle of the boat up to one of these ring nuts at the base of the mast so now we're able to pull a tension between this front strap and the straps at the rear that go to the oarlock base and that way all your straps are tight and your front assembly is well secured to the boat over here just to show you an, a, an option if you don't want to take the trouble to get your strap through this hole in the rope fitting you can wrap it around the rope on either side of the rope fitting on both sides of the rope fitting and then go over the top just like that so this strap is not actually going through the rope fitting you can see I've I've wrapped it around on the right side of the fitting and again on the left side of the fitting and then I came over top of the frame and this of course is just like the other side tighten these knobs put the strap under the oarlock base the rear assembly it attaches with bolts to the motor mount fitting big washer under here a wing headed bolt goes up through here and then star knob you tighten it up down here at the base of the right angle piece we put a strap to the stern handle and that keeps this from flopping around like that if we didn't have a stern handle and some boats don't that are otherwise similar so now I'm talking about uh, I've left the subject of the Mariner for a minute and I'm talking about other boats. Other boats, if they don't have a stern handle, then we provide this right angle piece, this L bracket. You can see that. And so you put the hole in the L bracket over this leg of the U bolt after removing the star knob. And that does the same thing as the strap at the bottom it prevents the steering or crossbar from flopping forward but the Mariner doesn't have one of those because it doesn't need it last thing I'm going to talk about the sheet line the sheet line is what you use to control the angle of the sail we provide a rope fitting that goes on the boom and a short strap that can go through that rope fitting and then you tie one end of the sheet to something on the boat here I'm using the grab line but you could use the oar lock you could use this fitting here or the rope that goes between it if you want to remove this gear bag this part of the boat anyway you anchor one end to something on the boat and then you have it slide through that strap just like it was a pulley and that gives you a two to one mechanical advantage for pulling in the sail and holding it where you want it in lighter winds uh, you might just tie the end of the sheet line directly into this strap or into the rope fitting directly and just run it directly from here to your hand but the way I've got it set up is for stronger winds gives you a two to one mechanical advantage one more thing don't want to forget to talk about this little strap there's a possibility if we didn't use this strap that the oar could pop out of the uh, rear crossbar and so we run a short strap between the oar shaft and the pivot bolt of the oar pin and around underneath the rear crossbar and now that can't come out but it's very easy to remove 
if I want to. You might want to order uh, an extra short strap or maybe two extra short straps. They're very handy to have for many purposes. For example, I like to use two steering oars. That's another option. You can order a second steering oar. And then I put a short strap right here around the grab line and the oar that I'm not using I slip that short strap over its handle and that keeps the blade out of the water. And there's just a million uses for those short straps so you might want to get extra ones. Other options to consider we have a nice carry bag for the folded sail kit. Uh, you can upgrade the sail size. This is the 45 square foot sail. You can upgrade to a 55 square foot sail and you'll go significantly faster with that in light and moderate winds uh, and still be okay in stronger winds. And just uh, take a look at the upgrades and accessories page on the uh, sail kit section, on the dinghy sailboat section and you'll see all kinds of cool options that you could add to your order. This horizontal piece in your screen is called the steering balance tuner and it's an optional extra cost accessory. It doesn't cost a lot extra and it's kind of good to have. I, this allows you to mount the mast step which is this socket for the mast that's in my hand farther forward on the boat and that reduces the amount of weather helm that you'll experience in the steering. I'll explain what that means in a minute but first let me show you where the steering balance tuner goes. On this boat you can see that the mast step and again that's the socket for the mast uh, is attached right to the middle of the front crossbar itself. But if we take that mast step off and instead attach this piece at the center of the front crossbar then we can move the mast step farther forward out to the front end of the steering balance tuner. Remember the steering balance tuner is this piece here with the two U-bolts to attach it to the front crossbar. Moving the mast forward will change the way the boat steers. It'll give it less weather helm. Weather helm is the tendency of a sailboat to turn up into the wind that you constantly are correcting for by holding the rudder straight. You want a certain amount of weather helm that gives you predictable handling for the boat. But if you have too much weather helm, that's a strain on your arm. You're going along holding against the tendency of the boat to turn up into the wind. You're always pulling against that. And that's creating more drag from your rudder or steering oar. So you can adjust the amount of weather helm by adjusting the position of the mast. And the more you move the mast forward, the more you reduce the weather helm. Now you don't want to reduce it to zero because that would give you unpredictable handling. One minute it would be weather helm, the next minute it would be the opposite, lee helm, which would be an undesirable tendency to turn downwind. With the steering balance tuner, you can adjust the mast position to get a very light amount of weather helm, and that's desirable. Another option to consider is the snap-off leeboard mount. This is a modest additional cost, and it just makes it more convenient and more robust. With the standard leeboard mount, you've got a bolt here and to remove the leeboards, you've got to twist, 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 and that's a little tedious. With the snap-off leeboard mount, it's very convenient. You just push that button, and off it comes. And this little right-angle stub that remains on the leeboard is short enough that it can go in your bag, no problem, just like that. No reason to ever remove this knob. Here's a snap-off leeboard mount, not on the boat, and without a leeboard on it. And you can see that the male thread is a permanent part of the leeboard mount. This male thread is stainless steel, and the female thread inside the knob is also stainless steel. So another advantage of this type of leeboard mount 
because you got stainless steel to stainless steel and that's the toughest uh, most long-lasting kind of thread you could have and just to show you how it snaps apart same as the one that's on the boat with the standard Lee board mount the aluminum is, has the female thread and the uh, knob that attaches the Lee board is uh, a stainless steel male thread and you screw the knob shaft into the aluminum female thread and aluminum thread is just not quite as strong as a stainless steel thread so two reasons to consider the snap off Lee board mount one the convenience of being able to snap it off and two the more robust female thread this is the optional rudder steering the more traditional center rudder and for that we take off the rear crossbar in fact you wouldn't get that at all if you're sure you want to use the rudder instead and we bolt on a rudder mount to the motor mount fittings and then by means of a rudder pin this pin right here the rudder is connected to the rudder mount and then you steer with this center tiller a strap at the bottom goes down to this turn handle just the way we did on the steering oar system I really like the steering oar system I know it's unconventional uh, but I've been selling it for uh, a long long time and customers like it uh, it's simple it's light and it gives you really great control but uh, for children I think the center rudder is better and some adults will prefer it as well uh, it is um, a little bit less arm effort to steer with the rudder and of course it's the traditional sailboat steering mechanism so if you're trying to learn sailing to sail a whole lot of different boats maybe you should stick with the center rudder uh, the steering oar system gives you the option of having the motor mount and having a motor as well because if the motor mount is occupying these motor mount fittings you can just take the steering oar crossbar and connect it to the motor mount with a pair of u-bolts that we provide we provide a hardware set for attaching the steering oar crossbar to the motor mount and then you can have the motor in addition to the sail kit mounted to the boat at the same time to remove the rudder you just pull the pin and the rudder comes right off now we can see the motor mount and all this is one piece it's welded here as well as bolted and it just connects with these two bolts and the one strap now if you don't have a stern handle on your particular boat such as on the Cheyennes then you use the L bracket just as we discussed with the steering arc crossbar there's the L bracket if your boat doesn't have a stern handle to strap down to then we will give you a rudder mount that's got the L bracket and it goes right under this nut here on the top eye bolt and that will stabilize your rudder and keep it from flopping up so thanks for watching again I'm Jim Luckett of sailboats to go.com and we have been watching how the sail kit works on the Intex Mariner and how you attach it.